Hey everybody, Michael Park here. Now, when I first started this YouTube channel, I really meant it as a method or a means to share little videos of stuff to friends and family. But as time has gone on and more and more people have kind of come across this channel, I've gotten a lot more subscribers. Now, I really appreciate that, and as a show of my appreciation, I've decided to start releasing some quick tips on this YouTube channel that will hopefully help some of you guys with some areas of After Effects which will hopefully give you some tips or tricks or speed up your workflow. Now these aren't going to be earth shattering motion graphics tutorials. I don't have the time to do that on this YouTube channel. I release a lot of tutorials through Digital Juice, through Creative Cow, and through Red Giant TV. So you can find some of my longer tutorials there. I have some of the outputs of those tutorials on this YouTube channel. So just take a look at the outputs and see if there are any tutorials that uh, or effects you think are cool and want to see how they're done. Then go to the respective place and you can view those longer tutorials. Typically they're about a half hour long. But on this channel I only have about 10 or 15 minutes per tutorial so I thought I'd release some smaller kind of tips to hopefully speed up your workflow. Now the first one I want to talk about is the ability to lock these project panels and you know this is something that I didn't really realize and I've been using After Effects for years and years and years but never really thought about these little lock switches and they're extremely handy for a variety of things and I'll show you a couple different ways how you can use these so the first thing I want to do is to just simply uh, create a little scene here I'm just going to create a new solid layer and just call this uh, fireworks click OK I'm just gonna drag a preset that I've made from uh, particular onto this and all this really is you can see it's actually quite a bit but um, it's basically a firework that goes up hopefully you can see this it's all using particular and then it uh, explodes out it just kinda drifts off you've got smoke and everything else um, I might as well give myself a shameless plug here. It's pretty cool because you can basically adjust the uh, color to whatever you want. This time, obviously, I'm going with a blue. And you can adjust any of these, and it'll automatically update, which is great if you want to create multiple fireworks. And, you know, if you want to, you can just simply duplicate this layer and move it down in time. Um, then just grab the color, change the color to back to green or something like that and you can change the height that it goes up just by simply moving this slider and you can change obviously the position that's the point control I just need to rename that and move it over and BAM you've got uh, you know multiple fireworks going up and blasting off <laughs> you can even increase the size of it by using the velocity slider so you know create lots of cool varied fireworks with that anyway shameless plug pretty cool. Um, I might be releasing this in a tutorial a little bit later on through maybe uh, Red Giant TV or uh, Creative Cow or somebody so anyway look for that. Anyway so back to our tip I got a little sidetracked. If you have something like this and you have a lot of different layers inside of your fireworks control or in your effects control period and you want to be able to link to those it's kind of a pain in the can to try to do that uh, down here in the timeline. So, for example, let's say I want to link a light to this because I want to dynamically light something in the background. So I just create a new light and we'll just call this green, make it a green color. And this is kind of a typical thing that would happen. So I've got this light and I want it to go up and link to the emitter of the particles so when it goes up it kind of travels along and explodes out and I'm going to use a pick whip to do that so let's just rename this fireworks screen so we know what's going on alright so what I want to do is go here to my particular main into the emitter and this is the position that I want to track position X Y and position Z so I hit P on this to reveal the position that I want to pick whip and then typically you'd go down here and twirl down all this stuff and go down to the effects and then you would have to go down to particular main you have to go down to the emitter okay and this is the area where you want to pick whip to now you can you know drag this way up and try to give yourself more space which uh, is fine except for you know if you got a lot of things going on that can get kind of tedious and be a royal pain in the can 
So if you want to try to alt click this, you'd have to pick whip and kind of move it down so it scrolls down. Just a really tough way to do it. And it can be frustrating because you can have the uh, layer panel scroll up and down on you a lot. Here's an easier way to handle that and to keep, you know, your sanity. Simply grab the fireworks layer that you want to pick whip to and click the lock button. Now, no matter what layer you select, um, that effect will stay locked. So you can always see it. So now all you got to do is come down here to your uh, light layer grab your pick whip and simply grab it and pick whip to whatever you need to and it will put that in there for you and this one actually just go to zero like so and voila your light now is traveling right along with your I guess the uh, null or whatever values you wanted to drive the position of your light object. So very handy there. There's a second way that I often use this lock panel thing um, and that's often when I'm dealing with um, multiple compositions where I have pre-comps in them. So for example let's go ahead and let's say we want to pre-comp these. So we'll go layer pre-compose. So we'll pre-comp these into a new composition. So now What's difficult is I've got this final comp here, um, but I, all of my settings are inside a pre-comp. And so it's very difficult to change attributes in the pre-comp and then to come back and see what's going on on the main comp. So here's a little tip that uh, will hopefully save you guys some time. What I'm going to do is basically go, uh, whoops, view, view new viewer. And as you can see, this creates a new locked, locked uh, viewer for this composition. And I can simply drag this over to the side and create two views. And one is locked to the composition, which I'm just going to lock this one instead. And then I can basically go to this pre-comp. And now I'm inside the pre-comp, and the pre-comp is open. I can see this window, and we can lock that. And you can either, you know, do your adjustments here inside the pre-comp. Say, for example, you want to uh, come into your, to your effects control of your fireworks. And instead of green, you want to change this to, I don't know, purple. Adjust the timing of it. And as you can see, it will automatically update inside of your main composition, which is very handy to work this way. Um, keeps you from you know, having to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And honestly, you really don't even need to have the second viewer if you don't want. You can simply have this comp locked, or the viewer locked to your main composition, and make all of your changes in real time in your pre-comp and be able to see it in the main comp. So just a quick handy tool or tip about how to use uh, this toggle the viewer lock or toggle lock inside of your uh, After Effects workspace here and it hopefully will save you some time and frustration with lining things up and pre-comps and everything else. So, I hope you found this tip useful and uh, you know come back and look for more tips and tricks for some After Effects quick tips in the future. Until next time, this is Michael Park.